Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to make the most delicious soft sourdough sandwich bread. To make the dough, add 300 grams of active sourdough starter to a large mixing bowl. Next, add in 650 grams of warm water. Ideally, you want the water to be around 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Mix the starter and water together until most of the starter is dissolved into the water. Next, you'll add in 50 grams of honey. You can sub the honey with maple syrup, sugar, or agave. And then add in 40 grams of avocado oil. This can be subbed with any neutral tasting oil, like olive oil, or any oil of your choice, or melted butter. Give all these ingredients a quick mix together, and then finally add in 20 grams of salt and 1,000 grams of bread flour. Mix all of the ingredients together until no dry patches of flour remain. I like to mix the dough with a dough whisk, but you can also use your hands or a silicone spatula. Once your ingredients are mixed into a shaggy, messy dough, scrape down the sides of your bowl the best that you can, and then cover your bowl with a lid or a damp towel and let the dough rest on the counter for one hour. After one hour of resting, we'll start a series of stretch and folds in order to increase the strength of the dough and organize the gluten network. To stretch and fold the dough, reach into the bowl on one side and stretch the dough up and then fold it down over itself. Give the bowl a quarter turn and repeat on all four sides. If your dough seems very loose, you can repeat around the bowl a second time. But if the dough starts resisting, make sure you stop. You don't want to tear the dough. Cover the bowl again with a lid or damp towel and allow it to rest for 30 minutes. Repeat another three rounds of stretch and folds on the dough this same way with 30 minute rest periods in between each. A great tip to minimize the amount of dough sticking to your hands during stretch and folds is to wet your hands with water each time before handling the dough. By the fourth round of stretch and folds, you should notice that the surface of the dough is much smoother than it was when it was first mixed together. You may also notice some bubbles starting to appear on the surface of the dough. For the fourth set of stretch and folds, you can perform it just like all of the rest. You see in the video here, I'm doing what is called a coil fold. It's essentially the same as a stretch and fold, except instead of folding the dough up and over itself, I'm folding the sides under itself. You can do a coil fold like me or just a regular stretch and fold. After you're done with your fourth stretch and fold, you'll want to flour the surface of your dough, I just use bread flour, and then cover your bowl in plastic wrap or a lid if you have one, and place the dough in the refrigerator overnight. The next morning, take your dough out of the fridge and allow it to rest in its bowl on the counter for about two hours or until it comes up to room temperature. When your dough is almost done resting on the counter, you'll want to prepare your pans for baking. I bake these loaves in 9 by 5 inch loaf pans. I first take a piece of aluminum foil and shape it onto the bottom of the loaf pan. This will make a lid in the shape of the pan that we can put over the bread to keep the crust from getting too brown in the beginning of baking. Do this for both of your loaf pans. My pans are non-stick, so I just spray the inside of the pans with avocado oil but you could also line the bottom and the long sides of the pan with parchment paper and then spray with oil in order to keep the loaves from sticking. Set your pans and prep lids to the side for later. Once the dough has come to room temperature, you'll know that it's ready to shape by the fact that it has grown quite a bit in the bowl, it may even double, and that it is super jiggly and full of air if you wiggle the bowl. If your dough has not grown in size, allow it more time to rest on the counter until it doubles or almost doubles. Yours just might need a little bit more time and that's okay. Pick your bowl up and flip it over and allow your dough to naturally release from the bowl onto the counter. Using a wet bench scraper or a knife, divide your dough into two equal pieces. You could definitely weigh these out, but I like to just eyeball it. Once you have the dough in two pieces, move one of them out of the way. Next, you'll want to use a rolling pin to flatten out your dough into the shape of a rectangle. I wet my rolling pin with water before using it so that it wouldn't stick to my dough. You could also use a little bit of flour, but be very sparing as the dough still needs to be able to stick to itself during the shaping process. 
So flatten your dough into a large rectangle and with your rolling pin, squish out as much air as possible. If you leave air bubbles in your dough, you'll end up with large holes in your bread, which isn't really ideal for sandwich bread. So just keep rolling over the dough in all directions until you get it nice and flattened out, as much air out as possible, and into a large rectangle. After rolling out the dough as best as I can, I just gently tug on the corners to form the dough more into a rectangular shape. You want the long sides of the rectangle on the sides of the dough and the shorter sides of the rectangle on the top and bottom. To shape the bread, fold each of the long sides of the rectangle into the center. You don't really want to overlap them too much, you just want them both to meet in the center. Then fold the two corners by yourself in towards the center, almost like an envelope shape. And then roll up the dough as tightly as you can all the way along the length of the dough. Once you have the dough all rolled up, keep the seam side on the bottom, and I like to pinch and tuck the sides of the dough in so that it's more uniform on the sides rather than that coil shape. Once you have the sides tucked in and sealed up, keep the seam on the bottom of the dough and transfer the dough into your greased loaf pan, seam side down. Repeat that exact same process with your second piece of dough and then cover both of your loaf pans with a damp towel and let them rest on the counter for about one hour. While the bread is in this final resting period, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. After resting, your dough should have relaxed and filled out the pans a little bit more. I then generously spray the top of each loaf with water. This will just help to create a little bit of steam and allow the bread to rise more before the crust has formed. I then like to use my bread lom to score three diagonal slashes across the top of each loaf. This will just help with the expansion. Cover your pans with the foil lids that we made earlier. These will allow for a lot of space between the bread and the foil so that the bread has plenty of space to rise while it's baking. Place your pans into your preheated oven and bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 minutes. After 35 minutes of baking, gently remove the foil from the top of the pan. Sometimes it can stick to the bread just a little bit, so just be gentle when you're peeling it off. And then turn your oven down to 375 degrees and continue to bake for about 15 minutes until the loaves are golden brown and have reached an internal temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. When the bread is done, remove the pans from the oven and then gently run a butter knife along all the sides of the pan just to detach the bread from the walls of the pan and then flip the pan over onto a wire cooling rack and the bread should pop right out. Allow your loaves to cool completely before cutting into them. And now, the best part. I store my sandwich bread sealed in a Ziploc bag on the counter, and oftentimes I freeze the second loaf and just thaw it when I'm ready to use. This is the most delicious, soft, fluffy bread. It's fantastic for sandwiches and the best toast. Leave a comment below if you make this recipe or what you'd like to see next. Thank you all so much for watching.